to another episode of Living Room Wisdom, where your story is your glory. I am Petrina Wisdom, abundance activator, best-selling author, TEDx speaker, and founder of Pure Abundance Retreats. And today, I'm so excited to introduce you to Linda Sunshine, Sunshine, Linda Sunshine West with Action Takers Publishing. Now, this is someone I actually met easily seven, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is actually the first time we're engaging in person. So not only am I sharing her with you, but I am excited to get to know her better as well. So welcome, yes. welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you, I'm excited so to be to here. Because as you just mentioned, you know, I saw you speak at an event seven or eight years ago. And um, I was at a place in my life where I didn't have much confidence to talk mm -hmm. to people that I saw as like these powerful women. And you were definitely a powerful woman. And I saw you up there, I was like, Wow, look at her. I can't talk to her. So I didn't, you know, and here we are now, like just yeah. coming full circle. Yeah, it's all about timing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, places and spaces. Who would have known these many years later we would be sitting here doing this interview yeah. and just through a little pre conversation, we'll end up working together on a yeah. book project. Very exciting. So share with our audience um, not just what you do, but who you are, because that's most important. Yeah, well, you know, the, the journey is real. Yes. <laughs> Gotta say, you know, all the ups and downs, twists and turns, backwards, frontwards, and all these things. Uh, about eight years ago, I, after working in the corporate world for 36 years, having 49 jobs. What? Yeah. You know, my last job was working for a judge in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I was the legal secretary. Okay. And I worked my way up the ladder you know, to get there, and I was so excited to have that job because... Here I was, like I was working for a judge, and I hated it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I built this prison around myself. Mm -hmm. So after about 13 months or so, I said, you know what, I've got to get out of here. I hired a life coach. <laughs> she helped me tremendously to open up my mind to possibilities, to who I am, and, and learn who I am, mm -hmm. and start to, start to step into mm -hmm. that. And then the journey just kept unfolding. Well, in January of 2015, January 1st, I woke up. I don't do New Year's resolutions because I break them all the time, right? Yeah, like a lot of us, right? But January 1st, 2015, I woke up that morning and I said, oh my gosh, I have so many fears mm -hmm. that are stopping me from living. I'm going to break through a fear every day this year. Like that's, that's awesome. just kind of came to me. Mm -hmm. And so I did that 365 days in a row. The first thing I did when I woke up is I asked myself, what scares me? Mm -hmm. And then I laid in bed and I waited till the very first fear popped into my head. I tell you what, if you're going to break through fears every single day, you are going to shift. Mm -hmm. Huge transformation. And due to that step that I took of breaking through those fears every day, set me up for what I didn't know was to come, was to meet some absolutely incredible people who would mm. teach me who I am. Yeah. Who would help me to see who I am and who would help me to believe who I am. Mm -hmm. And so the, the transformation has been incredible and I'm still transforming. I turned 60 recently and, oh my um, gosh. happy birthday. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Like the whole journey started at 51 and yes. I'm so glad I took that first step to raise my hand and say, I'm ready. Let's go. I love it. So I, of course, am curious because 365 is a lot of fears. Yes. And I'm a person who honestly, I would have to dig really deep to, to find a fear you know, just because of my journey and my life and all of the things yeah. that I've had to overcome. So I would love to find out from you if you can maybe pinpoint where some of those fears originated. Yeah, I love that you asked that question because that's what I started doing. About three months into it, I started saying, what's the common theme mm. here? Like, what is it? And I'm discovering that my greatest fear was the fear of judgment. Mm. What would they think about me? What would they say about me? Mm. And this is the number one fear worldwide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and what was interesting about that, and then I, I even took a step further back. I said, well, what caused this fear of judgment? Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very volatile, abusive, alcoholic household. Mm. There was judgment all over the place in my house, my friends. And I attracted judgmental people because I was judgmental. Yes. You know, I was attracting who I was. And so when I looked at that, I remember I read um, Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. The very first chapter is take 100% responsibility for right. your life. And I was like, boy, what a slap in the face. Because mm -hmm. You mean I can't blame them exactly. and them and them? Like I did for years, yeah. decades, you know. 
blaming other people for the things that didn't go well, mm -hmm. and then giving credit to others for the things that did go well. Yeah. I didn't even take credit. And so this was huge because I, I got this opportunity to see that, whoa, I am attracting judgmental people because I am judgmental, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a great realization. Now I can practice on you know, becoming non-judgmental or, or you know, working on that at least, and just really focusing on that. So I'll show you, share with you just like a couple of the fears that came up. One, one was um, talk to a stranger in a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It was so very specific. Yes. You know? So that networking event that I saw you speak at yeah. years ago, what I used to do is I would drive to a networking event and I would talk myself into it. Like I'm going to walk in there and pretend like I own the place. Yes. Because I was so terrified to walk in. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I would drive there, get to the parking lot, park my car, get on Facebook, not go in, and go home. <laughs> really? Yes. I was so scared yes. to talk to but people. But you took steps. So I do want to honor yes, that. Yes, you got up, you. you got dressed, <laughs> yes. you got in the car, you drove there, you sat in the parking lot, and that was all I could handle today. Yeah, right? Yeah. Wow. And, and sometimes I actually walked in. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and it's, what's interesting about this whole procedure and process, see, I ran away when I was five, and I was mm. gone a week, mm. a whole week. And at five? At five, yeah. Well, I didn't like the environment. Unbelievable. You know? Yeah. I just went to the neighbor's house so I was safe. Okay. But I'll share it. I, th I think you're going to love this because what happened in that week was something that would like change who I was. Mm -hmm. A confident five-year-old ran away. Right. But while I was gone, nobody came to get me. Ah. Uh. Now, my mom knew where I was, but this five-year-old didn't know mom knew where I was. Mm -hmm. So what happened is my belief system at five years old, they didn't come to get me because they don't love me and they don't want me around. Mm. So when my mom brought me back home, I had this new belief. Right. And that's how I lived my life for many, many years. Right. And so all of your actions, all of your thoughts, all yeah. of your interactions and communications were based on that belief, that one which little, then created oh my the shit show that became your life. <laughs> right? Oh my God. I, you know what? You look at people pleaser in the dictionary yes. and there is me. That's why yeah. I'm, I'm standing there proud. Because I was proud yeah. that I was, that I could just blend into every right. situation. I could help everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. liked me. I took pride in that. Mm -hmm. But realizing that's because I never took a stand for myself. Exactly. I didn't know who I was. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of courage to take a stand for yourself. Yeah. And one thing I know from working with women for psh, over two decades is that most women have that people pleaser. And mm -hmm. I mean, some of it I believe might be generational, right? Because the women previously were staying in the home and, you know, yeah. the messaging was very be seen, not heard. And ladies don't do this. So all these ideas and these social constructs of what a woman is. And it's so refreshing. As a matter of fact, that was, I believe, my message at that. Um, I don't even remember which networking group we met mm -hmm, at, mm -hmm. but I just know I'm always talking about like owning your voice and liberation oh, yeah. and being empowered. And so it does take a lot of courage to step into that space and really own your voice. But it takes even more courage to tackle it head on like you did. Because oh gosh, people yeah. will sit and meditate on a mountain and hope and wish and pray all freaking day long and yeah. talk about what they want to change in their life. But you actually took the steps. So that's amazing. Taking that action is, is a big, yeah. big deal, right? Because, um, yeah, like you say, I say it all the time. We can hope, dream, pray, manifest, desire, yeah. everything we want in life. But if it's staring us in the face and we don't take the action, yeah. nothing will new happen. New action. Yeah. New action. Yes, yes. A, right? a new action in a different direction. Because, you know, and it is scary. Change can be scary. Mm -hmm. But I learned to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And just say, wow, bring it on, you know. So I came up with my own saying is to um, do it because you're scared. Yeah. Because to me, the words like do, I hear like do it in spite of the fear. Yes. But that just feels disempowering. Yeah. But if I say, you know what, if I, looking at all those fears that I say 99% of the time, every single fear I broke through, I either was proud of myself mm -hmm. or I got a great result or I met somebody that I didn't know I was going to meet mm -hmm. and a door was opened that I didn't even know yes. was closed. So why am I, why am I not allowing myself to be proud of myself, mm -hmm. meet somebody I wouldn't meet, open mm -hmm. a door, right? So I do it because I'm scared and when I feel fear, because I still experience fear, right. when I feel it, I say, oh, let's go. Let's go do it yes. because I'm scared. I it's now a this. challenge. Like, yeah. okay, bring it on. It's yeah. almost like shedding light on the next 
uh, level of your abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Opening this new door. Yes. So I'm really interested to find out from you then, what was, what is the difference in your life now that you're facing fears head on, you've liberated yourself, you're trying new things, um, not your own biggest bully anymore yeah. compared to what your life was then. And, and specifically what I want to know about is the manifestation externally, right? So friends, associates, um, career wise, like how has leaving that space essentially of scarcity, right? Of yeah, what yeah, I yeah. can't do, what I can't have, who I'm not and stepping really into this space of abundance. How has that completely changed your life? Completely. <laughs> I know the answers to the questions I ask, <laughs> but I want to hear this specific yeah. journey. You know, it's been, yes. it's been incredible because, um, first of all, I remember when I had this realization that things had started really shifting is I looked back and I said, wow, I haven't heard from this friend mm -hmm. in nine months. And I had, like we called every single month right. for years since we were in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow, I haven't heard from so-and-so in nine months. And then I looked and I said, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because that was, that was when I realized that, that that was a sloughing off mm -hmm. that needed to happen in order for me to move into that new space. And it was just constant happening. So every single thing in my mm -hmm. life right now, yeah. with the exception of my husband, we've been together 34 years. Awesome. And that's a story in itself because there's of been course. some shift of me and not him. Right. And, and then my family, um, every single thing is completely different. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, it's Isn't been incredible. Isn't it crazy? It is insane because the, 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 the prison that we, that we, feel like we're stuck in at a certain point in our lives can be changed like that in an instant. We just have to decide. Yeah. You just decide and go do it. Yes. And, um, yes, it can, yes, it can be scary. I remember when I left my first husband, um, I was with him for two years and every single day for two years, he yelled at me you know, and he yelled at me, you're stupid. You're ignorant. People wow. are only nice to you because they feel sorry for you. So unfortunately, I believe that I yes. came from abuse. I went into yeah. abuse, and I just carried those beliefs around with me, you know. And um, when I walked out on him, I had a baby four four weeks old, and a son was fourteen months old. I had a diaper bag and a purse, mm -hmm. and that was it. Mm -hmm. And I literally walked out because I didn't have a car. Yeah. So when I walked, you should out, literally walked out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So when yeah. I walked out on him, people say, "Wow, wow that was so brave." Yeah. And I say, I had two fears, yes. the fear of staying or the fear of leaving. Mm -hmm. I chose the fear of leaving because mm -hmm. I knew the fear of staying would lead to my mom's life yes. of abuse, 55 years ah. of abuse. I ah. knew it would lead to that life. So I said, you know what? I'd rather be scared mm -hmm. and leave than stay and be fearful for my mm -hmm. whole life. Yeah. I made that decision. It wasn't based on confidence. It wasn't based on courage. Yes. It was based on fear. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... The decisions we make and the actions that we take are based on fear. Mm -hmm. And we let fear either fuel us yes. or we let it stop us. We yeah. get to decide. Mm -hmm. Everything is motivated by pain or pleasure. Yeah. And I think for most people, it's the pain yes. that's going to get them to, to move forward and make a new decision. So for our audience, if there's someone out there, and you know, sometimes when you hear stories, right, a lot of the stories that are featured, you know, in podcasts and things of that nature are pretty grandiose, right? Not everyone has the level of trauma and like, right. you know, adventure that maybe we've had in our lives. And so I always like to kind of bring it down to the person who even something as simple as being called stupid as a child, yeah. right? Or something like that. We all have trauma in some way. And so no matter how big or small you feel your trauma is, what is the point? Like, what is it, what is the point that they need to get to in order to make change? Like what needs to be done? What needs to be believed in order for them to change their life? Yeah. Awareness. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll share with you my little ditty. <laughs> I, yeah. I wrote the other day. I have awareness. I hey. have awareness now. I have awareness. How now brown cow? I have awareness. I have awareness now, it's time for me to move on. Like Donkey Kong. I love it. 
I love I, it. I just, do you have a Do you have a background in music, or do you just love I love music singing. and theater? I, you know, theater. I started playing bass guitar at uh -huh. age forty seven. Okay. I had my mom, my, my husband, it. teach me how to play it, and and then he was like, "Oh, you're gonna sing too." I'm like, "I can't sing." Uh huh. He goes, "Yeah, you can't just do it." So. Well, it's not about the voice; it's about the feeling. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like I that song that. is so funny because it really is about awareness. Cute. Every single action that we take when we decide to do something different, right? Yeah. You're making that different step is that we have to have awareness mm -hmm. to change. Because if I don't have awareness, I'm just going like a robot going down my yes. everyday life. And so I often will check in with my self and say, well, okay, how am I feeling right now? Yeah. Why do I not want to do this? Am I scared? What's stopping me? Mm -hmm. What's preventing me? Mm -hmm. And I'll look back and I'll, I'll reflect on what my past life was and say, I'm not there anymore. Yeah. I don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. That's not my life. So I have awareness, a lot of it now, I didn't used to, mm -hmm. you know, I lived in that lack mindset. Cultivated. Yeah. Yes. And that's just part of my life. And it's, it's amazing because it's, it was, it took that decision. I had to decide to want something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. I love everything about this interview. I could talk to this woman all day long and I'm sure it would go in all sorts of directions. Oh, yeah. But before we actually wrap up, I want you to tell our audience a little bit about the work, the magic that you do in the world, um, and and kind of what motivated that work for you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for asking that. Because, you know, I I became an entrepreneur at age fifty one. Mm. I wow. I know I jumped out of that that cushy right. government job. I didn't have, yeah. I don't have a pension. With forty nine jobs, you don't have a pension. Yeah. You, you don't have retirement, right? Because mm -hmm. it's forty nine jobs. And so when I left that job, working for that judge. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, mm. who I'm going to serve, or how I'm going to make any money, but I know I have to do something different, mm -hmm. right? And so I started down that path called entrepreneurship. Oh my gosh. I um, invested a couple hundred thousand dollars that I didn't really have, Yeah. but like we sold my childhood home to back my dream and passion of becoming a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And on the journey, I kept thinking that this is the thing, this is the thing, this... And I just kept thinking that was it, but it wasn't it, you know. Mm. So I spent seven years flailing around, okay. learning, growing, learning, growing, learning to think different things about me. And um, it led me to a situation. And um, so first, I'll just back up a little bit. In 2015, when I was breaking through those fears, mm. I ended up meeting somebody who had become a mentor of mine. Mm. His name is Greg Reed, Dr. Greg Reed. And he was writing a book called Footsteps of the Fearless. Now I'm breaking through a fear every day. Yeah. And he invited me to be in that book. It's a collaboration book. Okay. So he invited me to be in that book. And I was terrified, but I did it. Of course. And then after that year, he said, you should write a book. So I did. I wrote one called The Year of Fears. Okay. And then after that, I was like, wow, that's cool. I was in a book. I wrote a book. And by the way, I'm not a writer and I'm not a reader. Yeah. So why am I doing any of this? I was like, this was fun. Yeah. I love bringing everybody together. I'm going to start doing my own collaboration books. Mm. So I reached out to some people that I knew, you know, the founder of Ugg Boots, a friend of mine, and ah, the creator cool. of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the man, the man who invented well, the credit card. Just to name trip. a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny because I met these people on this wow. journey, and I just happened yeah. to connect with them, and it's because I was not... I was no longer letting fear stop me. Mm. And so I asked them, he said, "Will you? I'm writing a book, will you be in it? And they all said yes. Mm. And I was like, oh crap, now i got to write this book. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability. Like, right, keep a yes. commitment. Make a commitment to people who you really mm. want to make sure you stay committed to. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't stay committed to ourselves. So this is what That's I true. learned through that. So I put out that book. It was called Momentum. And after that, I was like, wow, that was so much fun. Mm. I'm going to do it again. I didn't make any money. Yeah. I, the the ghostwriter made all the money. Okay. Like I didn't make anything. And I was like, that was so much fun, I'm gonna do it again. So I did it again with two more books. Yeah. Those two books I launched eight days apart. They both hit number one international oh. bestseller status in under twelve hours. And I wow, said Wow, bravo. Thank you. But that was where that was my aha moment. Mm. This is awesome. I love this. I was doing it for free. So obviously Essentially, I loved it. Essentially, yeah. Right. Yeah, I didn't make any money, right? Yeah. And then so like I love this. I know what I'm doing. I am damn good at this. Mm. This is what I'm going to do. So I dumped everything else I was doing in business yeah. and focused on this. And you'll love this. So the next day, God sent me an angel mm. in the form of this woman named Kohila. She called me up. She said, I'm writing two books and I was wondering if you would publish them for me. Just out of the blue. Yeah. 
And I, I knew that was my sign that I was on the right path. Mm -hmm. So since that time, it's only been a year and a half, we've published mm -hmm. 14 number one international best-selling books wow. since that time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this path, it's been, you know, the path has been opened wide for me, but I had to be ready mm -hmm. for it. That's why I was saying when I met you years ago, I wasn't ready to talk to you, but now I am. Yeah. I had to go through this journey to be here, mm -hmm. to be confident, mm -hmm. to step up and say, I know what I'm doing and I'm damn good at it. Let's yes. go, everybody. And we're going. I'm excited. On a bullet train. I love, I love everything about what you just said. And there's some really important points that I want to make sure that the audience captures. And that is she invested hundreds of thousands of dollars yes. into her business, into this entrepreneurial journey, even not knowing what the thing was, yeah. right? So being willing to take a risk, being willing to invest in yourself, being willing to fail forward and and discover your path. Seven years she was discovering her path, but she didn't, you know, beat herself up. She didn't say, I'm such a failure, or like this isn't gonna work. You just kept going until your until your thing was revealed. Yes. Right? No, I did feel like giving up. But right. I didn't, right? So they yeah. got to a point where a couple of years ago we were almost homeless. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I, we downsized, we sold that childhood mm -hmm. home. We bought a, an eight wheel, uh, a fifth wheel trailer. We moved into it, became campground host. Mm -hmm. We did everything we could to make sure that money would last as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And then um, it got to the point where we were almost homeless because I wasn't making enough money. Mm -hmm. So my husband looked at me and he said, you know, yeah, I gotta go back to a job until you can figure this thing out. I believe in you, but you gotta figure this out. I was like. I don't want to go back to a job. Right. I was, I felt like I was having hives, yes. you know, from the thought of it. Yeah. But I did. I, I ended up going back to a job for a couple of years and I didn't feel like a failure from that. I think this is really important. I didn't feel like a failure in that. I just knew that I needed to keep tweaking mm -hmm. and figuring it out mm -hmm. and keep going and keep yes. making those connections. Fortunately, COVID hit three days after I started that job. So I worked from home. Oh, well, that's very convenient. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so it made it so I didn't have to get up and drive and spend yes. all that time on the road. And I was able to work from home mm -hmm. in my job as well as still work on my business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just keep moving forward. Like, don't give up. Mm -hmm. the, you don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know. I didn't know it was going to be seven years. And I would, I would still keep going if mm -hmm. I didn't figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that in this entrepreneurial journey, I call entrepreneurship a spiritual journey. Yeah, because as time. you're developing your business, you can't help but develop yourself. Yeah. You develop new skills, more courage, more confidence, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so if there's someone out there that has entrepreneurial dreams and visions, but maybe they're not quite clear on exactly what they want to do um, or how to get started, what would you share with them? I'd say, you know, find a coach that, that can see in you what you don't see in yourself. Mm. Because they will bring that out of you. But you have to be open. You have to have that open exactly. mind, that open heart, open soul. Be ready for it. Mm -hmm. And just surround yourself. This is so important. Surround yourself with positive, yes. uplifting, and supportive people who truly want to see you succeed. Because they will help you mm -hmm. as long as you take the steps. So at my mentor, I mentioned him earlier. He's been my mentor for eight years. And he said, what I love about you, Linda, is that when I give you something, you take it and you mm -hmm. run with it. Exactly. This is a, an ideal situation for a mentor because they don't want to mentor people who don't take action. Right. So really take that action. You may be scared, but do it because you're scared. Yeah. <sighs> I love this. Thank I'm you. so happy we reconnected. I know, me this too. This was awesome. And I thank you for sharing your brilliance and your wisdom and your thank energy you. and your light with our audience and with me, of course. And that's going to wrap up this episode of Living Room Wisdom, where your story is your glory. I am Petrina Wisdom. We will see you next week. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. More episodes just like this with amazing women. See you soon. Mm -hmm.